Welcome back to another edition of Front Office Rocks and Practice by Numbers. I am Laura from Front Office Rocks and this is Rohit who's from Practice by Numbers. And if you haven't watched any of our videos yet, I'm like the biggest fan of Practice by Numbers. So I'm, you know, helping everybody, not only my team learn about the great software, but everybody. Um, and we have been using Revenue IQ, which is a way to make calls to patients, which is super important for patients who are not scheduled to get them back into the schedule. And um, this will help you learn, I mean, you can watch other videos to learn how to find the lists and who to call. You can use Front Office Rocks to teach your team what to say when they reach the patient on the phone. But many times we don't reach our patients. Many times, you know, we have to leave a message and we wanna have some sort of a follow-up reminder. Now, Rohit's gonna show us Task IQ in Practice by Numbers, and I personally haven't started using this myself, so I may ask some questions along the way, because my team right now is using the task list offered in EagleSoft, so I wanna hear the benefits of Task IQ. So I'm gonna turn it over to you and let you explain to us how it works. Yeah, absolutely, Laura, and uh, being, being an EagleSoft user, or my, not myself, my wife's practices, we have a task list as well, and, and, and I will explain you why we decided to, in spite of having a task list in EagleSoft, we decided to implement something in our software. First of all, let me tell you what it, what it does. Uh, a task IQ, or basically it's a task list, um, we decided to have IQ on everything up top because it's like iPhone everything, so with thus it's IQ everything. Uh, the key thing is when you, when you make a call, you want to be able to you know, take immediate action. And sometimes immediate action is scheduling that appointment and sometimes it's not. And even after you talk to the patient and the patient says, yeah, I'm not quite ready, call me back in a month. I don't know. So I don't have finances. And that used to happen all the time. And then what we used to do was we used to forget calling that patient. And that became more and more of a problem. And that's a really good point. I want to point out here why this matters. When a patient, when they're in your office and you're diagnosing them for something and then they don't appoint, if you call them once and they say, call me back in a month, and then you don't, and it's two, three, four, or five months, their sense of urgency goes down. They start to wonder whether they needed that treatment anyway or not. They don't think to call you. We're not the favorite place to go to, the dental office. So it's really important when you tell the patient you're going to call them back in a week or a month or whenever that you do it because we need to make sure that we're impressing on them the importance of their dental care. So there's my little commercial for why it's important that you follow up when you say you're going to. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's, also, it's also that, right? I think it's under, making them understand that it's important. It's, mm -hmm. They're not just diagnosing stuff because... Just because, because right? Just yeah. Because, right? So Task IQ works with two main areas. It works with your revenue IQ, and I'll show you that. And it also works with the phone IQ, which is also very important. You get calls from patients, and the patient says they need something, and you tell them, okay, I'll have somebody else call you back. And some offices use the EagleSoft Task Manager, and some offices use sticky notes. <laughs> And neither worked very well. So what we decided to do was implement it such that it's integrated right into the phone IQ system. But first, let's look at that revenue IQ. Let's say you're searching for every single patient that had a di crown diagnosis in the past one year, and you have this awesome list that you're calling the patients from. Okay? Let's say you called this particular patient right here and the patient said, no, I do not want to schedule it right now because I'm trying to collect the finances needed to get this crown done. But call me back in one month and we'll schedule it. You can come back and run this list again, but you'll forget that you had to call this patient back. Of course, the patient will stay in this list, but what you do want to do is if the patient said, call me back in a month, you call them back with them in a month, plus minus a few days or a week here and there, right? Right. So, I pick this patient, and this is how we do this, is pick this patient and create a new task and in complete crown and put a due date a month out. And we create this task. The good thing with, this, with creating this task now is that this task will exist in your task IQ. And these are all, all the different tasks and will show exactly when the task is due and it'll show up on their homepage. So anybody who logs in, whoever this task is assigned to, when they log in, 
right on their home page it'll say how many tasks are due for that patient and how many of them are due this this week so for me as an office manager i think that's great or a doctor or anybody who's managing your team to make sure that follow-up calls are being scheduled and that you're doing them to be able to look in there and see that tasks are being assigned and that patients are in communication with you asking you to call back or whatever so i think that's really good that we can track the, the tasks being assigned but there's a but coming i hear no, but, no, but not yet. <laughs> no, I think for me, honestly, the only reason we haven't switched is I haven't told my team start using task IQ. We've just gotten in a habit and that's what happens with most offices. That's why implementing new software is, is um, hard at times. Yeah. We just have a habit. We just go to task list and Eagle soft. But if there's a benefit, if we're going to be managing calls through here, if we're going to be managing activity and calls back and all of that, we should just move everything over here because then I can manage, you know, is my staff doing the treatment follow-up calls that they should be doing when they say they're going to call them back in a month. Yeah. And, and, and the thing why it, I think it works better is because you make notes and it put timestamps on those notes so that, for example, when I come click on this, this particular one, I can actually make notes right here and it'll, it'll for example, there's a, there's a note from before and as you use this and as you create more tasks, it will put timestamps on each and every time you contact the patient. What were you doing to achieve this task? And the task doesn't necessarily have to be for, for treatment follow-up. It could be an outstanding payment, for example. Right. And so for exa I could go back in here and go back into Revenue IQ and create a whole another list which has nothing to do with treatment. The, the only thing I'm going to search there is account balance. Show me every single patient that owes me more than $500. Wow. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> okay. So now this is every single patient that owes me $500 or more. Yeah. I can create tasks and I can assign that to my accounts receivable person and she can make regular calls and have this task stay in her inbox till the task is resolved. So let me ask you for implementation. Um, you guys are hearing this live. I'm learning as, as an office myself. So one of the things I have them do when they make calls is copy and paste the notes into EagleSoft so that we have record that we made the call in EagleSoft. So for the task, when you put in the new notes or reassign the task, do you like patient asked me to call back April 15th? I put the notes in. Should I copy and paste it? Change the task to April 15th and then paste it into EagleSoft so that there's a record in there? I don't see any value in, because these are transient notes. These are not account notes. These are not okay. clinical notes. These are just transient notes where you're following up. Okay. But one of the things that we need to make sure then is that everybody in my office is using this or that so that I can track, keep it uniform. So yeah. everybody in my front office knows this is where the notes go, the tasks go, the, the calls go. Okay. Yes. And you don't, you shouldn't mix and match. But if you remember, if you're making a clinical note, definitely make it an Eagle Soft. If you're making an account note about a claim not being paid or uh, anything to do with the patient doesn't agree with the balance or whatever it might be. Okay. Notes that should stay in their aisle forever, they should yeah. always be made in Eagle Soft. Things like follow-ups, I don't think there's any value of those notes in Eagle Soft. Okay. Um, and so what I think I'm going to do with my team, so when my team's watching this, because I'm going to use these videos to train my team, I think you guys should also, if you're, if you're working with practice by numbers, um, as you open every day in EagleSoft and you get to tasks, do those tasks and, and complete them in EagleSoft, and then the next task for that patient, keep track of it and put it into um, practice by numbers so that we can migrate over to having all your tasks in um, practice by numbers. So practice by numbers is really kind of more of a... Um, a live interface to keep everything fresh and keep us going and being like I've said in other videos I want to be more proactive than reactive so um, this is the place to go to to get get everything about your patients and get you on the phones and get your schedule filled so I like that I think that's really good and I do want to add one more uh, thing about phone calls when do when you do get phone calls from patients so this is a phone IQ app and every time a patient calls this this app comes up top Let's say this particular patient had called and wanted a call back or wanted something or you needed to follow this patient back up or you needed to create a task to send an x-ray to, let's say, a specialist. Right. This is integrated into the task IQ system as well is that right here on this patient, you create a task right. from this app itself. You don't have to, have to have the website open. Assign it to a particular staff and put a note to say this needs to be done by, let's say, tomorrow. 
Yeah. And I'm going to say test task. So if I were, let's say I have two people calling patients, the same patient for some reason, or I look in a patient's account, will I be able to see there's a task associated with that patient and somebody else is already on a follow-up with them? So yes, if you bring up any patient, if there's a task open, it will show something. It'll show a different, uh, I have to find that. That's fine. You don't have to show it. I just wanted to know. So let's say I notice uh, the patient has a balance and I'm about to call them, but I see that somebody else on my team is following up with them tomorrow on scheduling an appointment, then I know there's a task in there for that patient. Yes, yes, that is, that is correct. It will show you, it'll have a different color and I just have to find that, right? For example. Um, and I'm putting you on the spot. See, no, this is yeah, what you I, do when we do live I don't videos. remember that about this one, what it shows, but I can put that as, as one of the comments in, on the YouTube video when you can okay. how to tell if there's already a task open. Okay, that's awesome. Great. Well, is there anything else we need to know about the task? Uh, I, task IQ? No, I don't think so. I think this is this is good, and this is this was the example of that phone IQ task that shows up on your website now, and it's assigned to the right person, and it has a due date, and that way you can follow up on this patient as well, and then go ahead and close the task out. I'm just looking at this contact. This is awesome. I saw that there was calls in and out. So there's so much cool stuff about Practice IQ. Look at that that contact log. That's if you're using the phone IQ, correct? Yes, that calls in and out will be. Uh, part of the phone IQ. That's amazing. So if you haven't already realized, I'm a huge cheerleader of practice um, by numbers. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing our office grow this year because I started a year or in January and we're already seeing some major changes in our practice. So task IQ is great. Uh, I'm going to have my team start putting their tasks in there and the follow-ups in there. And if you have any questions for either of us, if you need testimonials from me as to how we're doing in my practice, please reach out to me at Front Office Rocks, or you, of course, can uh, reach out to Rohit, and he will show you all the ins and outs of what you need to know with the software. Do you have anything else to add at that before we call it a day? I think we're good today. We've uh, taken more time than I intended to, so there we go again. Well, it's good. You know what? I think that people watching this appreciate it because now they can go and implement it themselves. So have fun with the Task IQ, everybody. We'll see you on the next video. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Laura. Thank you.